Hey there, Bob here with JD Squared. I apologize, it has been a long time since I've done a video, and it isn't because I've been sitting on my butt. In fact, I don't know if I've ever worked harder in my life. Um, over the last three months, we have made extensive changes or additions to the XR line of machines, specifically the XR12. We've also, I've been working extremely hard on the new software, which is called GC Maker. Now, we're gonna try to roll that out next week to people who have our rotary cutters. It's in limited functionality right now. I'll be talking about that at the end of this video. Now, I'm not trying to make a pretty video here, so I'm just trying to give you a quick update to what, what we're doing. So, with that in mind, let's talk about the hardware changes first. You can see, if you've got an XR12 or if you've been around them, there's no cable chain here. What we decided to do is we're going to go ahead and we actually are already shipping machines up to 50 feet long now. So this machine here, for instance, this is a 50 foot long, 10 inch diameter flagpole with 3 8 inch wall, aluminum construction. So that's what you see right here. Now to accomplish that, we couldn't have a cable chain that was running out the front here we had to run it out the reverse side. We refer to it as a reverse cable chain. So that's what you're seeing right here. So that allows us now to produce machines with the lengths of 26, which is our new standard measurement. It used to be 24. We've increased it by a couple of feet. And then we've got them into 30s. I think there's a 36 footer, a 42 footer, and then a 50 footer. Now, the reason that we're really trying to get to the long machines, it's not necessarily just for poles, even though we're trying to make, you know, an incredible pole making machine. It's really for structural steel. I have been focusing very, very hard for the last few months writing the software that's gonna, for instance, import an NC1 file and allow us to process uh, an, an angle iron or an I-beam or, or C-channel, something like that. It turns out I, very, I grossly underestimated how long it takes to write a user interface that the average person could use. Writing the code to actually generate the um, job, let's say, relatively easy, but writing an interface, hardest thing I've ever done in my life. But we'll talk about that later this week when I show, shoot the video and show you the new software where it's at. So anyway, we now have long machines. That was a big thing. And by the way, you're looking at a machine that we're working with this flagpole company. So this is, none of this has been plasma or powder coated. It's just, we're just, this is a machine in development right now. Now, another thing that we've done hardware wise is we've increased the number of drills that we can run up to three. Now, the first two can be electric. The third one can only be pneumatic. Now they can all be pneumatic. So, for instance, on this particular flagpole machine here, we've got an electric drill in position one, and then two and three have pneumatic drills. You can configure that any way you want. Another thing we've added is direct spindle support. So, for instance, this machine right here has a 24,000 RPM spindle in it, controlled by a VFD drive up there so that we can control the RPM, and we have built that into the control to where we can now set the RPM of the end mill. Now, this machine has a BLE on it. As you can see, a BLE stands for Beamline Emulation. And what I'm trying to do, call me crazy, whatever, um, I've talked to people um, that run Beamlines. And I actually talked to a gentleman, really nice guy, who actually built Beamline machines for well over a decade and a half. He was telling me that 90% of the work is done within 12 inch squares. And if you look around through this building right here, we can't find a piece of, for instance, I-beam over 10 inches. C-channel, the same thing. The biggest thing we've found, I think, in this building is 10 inch C-channel. Well, that's also what is the most popular, for instance, for like stairs, doing stringers, stuff like that. So what we've done is we developed this thing called the BLE, beamline emulation so that we could turn the torch and emulate or emulate the best we can a million dollar machine such as a Python X at least up to 12 inches. Now we like this idea a lot because this machine does things beamline machines don't do. For instance we have drills, we have twin marker systems, I could even add more. So we're trying to position this machine as the premier fabrication machine for people who are reading NC1 files up to 12 inch structural, doing railing, stuff like that. So that's why we developed the long machine is because we want to be able to handle 40 foot sticks of structural steel natively without having to spin it. 
Um, currently, our machines, of course, if you want to do C-channel or something like that, you can spin the part. It's a nightmare. I'll just tell you straight up because there's no torsional rigidity, so the part's just going to sit there and, and banana back and forth on you. So the best way to cut it is to just load it with a forklift loaded flat and don't spin it. That's why we had to develop the BLE. Now, when I walk down there and show you, I'll tell you the problem I had with the BLE, my original design, and how we're going to make it right for everybody who already purchased it and what that deal was. Anyway, so you can see now this machine has seven tools. I'm not even counting the little laser pointer. So as far as hardware goes, I think we're about as good as it's going to get. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the camera off the tripod and just walk down and just show you what a reverse cable chain uh, system looks like. Now, another thing to keep in mind that as I add features to the software or I add attachments to the XR12, they are good for everybody all the way back to numero uno. I am not going to leave anybody out in the cold. So as I develop all this stuff, you got an RC6, you're going to be able to take advantage of the conversational programming that is just getting ready to release here in a couple weeks or so. So anyway, without further ado, let me take that camera off. I'm just going to give you a quick scan up and down so you can kind of see what the reverse cable camera looks like. And then we'll walk on down to where I can show you better what the BLE attachment is and what we're doing with it. Okay, you can see what we've been doing. We've been drilling holes here. Let me walk on to this side of the machine over here. So you can see the kind of the finish that we're getting. Very pretty darn good finish. And what we're doing for these people is we're actually plasma cutting the hole and then we're coming back and we're multi-passing milling it with that right there. Now the new software is allowing us to also plasma cut holes vertically. So there's no more normalization. You don't get that oval look. You now can get a hole or we can cut it normalized. So anyway, let's walk over here and you can see how a reverse cable chain works. Basically, the cable chain is coming out of the back of the machine. You can see right here where we've added the extra amps, and that blue thing is the VFD control variable frequency drive to drive the spindle. And then, of course, we had to add things like a resistor to take the energy out of the spindle when you wind it down. Now, all this stuff is obviously covered when it ships. Like I say, we're just working on this machine. Anyway, the way the new cable carrier works, is it's a very low profile, you can see right here. If I, if I look at it sideways, you can see that the majority of the part is above the cable chain. This was done to minimize the dangers of loading with a forklift or an overhead loader. So you can see how that works right there. Now, coming on down this way, you can see the rollers on it. And what it happens, as this thing transverses down, these rollers are going to drop into these slots right here all the way to the very end so <clears throat> believe it or not this machine is long enough that is a 50 foot pole and it looks like we still got a little bit of room here on the end we don't guarantee anything more than 50 foot but anyway they told me it was a 50 foot pole <clears throat> so anyway that is the reverse cable chain setup let's walk on down now and i'll show you the current ble Okay, this is the BLE going through its paces right here. You can see it tilted. We're only tilted 45 degrees going around. However, the BLE will completely turn sideways, and the idea was to be able to cut our structural steel just by, instead of rotating the structural steel sideways, turn the torch sideways. So, for instance, let me stop this here real quick, and I'll show you. So, for instance, we can go, let me turn the rapids up a little bit. I could do like this right here, and now I'm cutting sideways. So the intention when I first developed the BLE, it did not look like this. It has a belt drive that comes all the way down. I'll talk about that in a minute. And the idea was we were only going to tilt in this direction right here, and this way right here. <clears throat> and the idea being that if you're doing structural steel, very little of it is angled this way. Now chamfering pipe, yes, that's what happens. So what happened was I was trying to juggle two things and this was completely my bad, I apologize for it. I underestimated the complexity of this. And what I was doing, I was juggling the software and the machine at the same time. And where I was running into a problem, we had that long belt drive on there. Well, that belt drive would allow us to move 
the torch a little bit. We're not talking tons, but 10, 15 thousandths of an inch. You, it would not settle back to the right spot, but everybody was saying, hey, it's close enough for plasma. I don't like that kind of thinking because why would you voluntarily want to live with, you know, with it being off? So what happened was over the months, I redesigned it to where now it is a direct drive system. It's, it's totally gear driven. So there's no belts, which means we have an incredibly rigid torch right now. Well, to do that, we completely changed everything. So the old BLE had a large beam up here and it had the belt in it and then it would turn the torch. The new BLE is comprised of three sections. The up and down W axis, which is this part. Then we have the this axis right here, which is the C axis to tilt this way. And then we could add the A axis and we could now add this in any configuration we want. So say for instance, you've got I-beam and all you want to do is you want to cut out a pentagon or in the middle of this I-beam or some holes. Then yeah, you're probably going to need to use the W to come down in order to lower the torch to get into that I-beam because the I-beam will hit the bottom of your tooling plate. So that's where you would want to use that one axis. Now, let's just say we are chamfering pipe. You don't even need that axis. You need this axis right here, which is the A axis to tilt the torch this way. If you want to do it all, you would need all three axes, the W, the C, and the A. So you can see what we've done. We've given everybody uh, choices, but at the same time, we have dramatically increased the capabilities of the machine. So for instance, now, we can very accurately cut this structural steel. So that's what we're planning on doing. And the idea is we're gonna load it flat. We are not gonna spin it. And then we're gonna come along and uh, let the torch do the tilting instead of, of the part rotated. So what are we gonna do? I just told you that we have shipped out, not a lot of them, but a bunch of these W axis with the tilt on it. And I thought at the time, oh, how hard can it be to write a little bit of software to cut a piece of angle iron? Well, it turns out I wasn't lying. That was real easy. I had it doing it within a matter of days. Where I screwed up, and I truly apologize, is I had to write the software in order the average person could do this. Not me knowing the machine, but somebody who just come up to the machine and say, hey, I want a piece of angle iron 36 inches long. I need a 45 degree cope on this and I want a hole here. So that's where I screwed up. I apologize. I spent like three or four months and believe me, I ain't got a whole lot of sleep during that time. I'm working hard. Well, anyway, I now have this beautiful piece of software user interface that I will be showing you here in a couple of days. Now, currently it's handling flagpoles, round poles, slots, holes, cope in the end, stuff like that. I am not currently generating G code to cut out that angle iron. That's next week's job. What I did is I got a user interface so that I could easily add these features. So for instance, when I go to do the I-beam, which I'm very excited about, to do the block out, well, I've already got all that built into the program. What I've got to do is write the code that generates the G code to cut out that block out. Much, much easier to do that than to create a user interface. My guess is a typical feature would be somewhere along the lines of a day or a day or a day and a half. So when we do actually add that block out feature, I don't think it's going to be too bad. So um, we'll be doing that. Now, here's what I'm doing. Everybody who got the up and down tilt got it at a great deal. They got it at $10,000, two axes. Each axis is normally going to be $10,000, 30 grand. Now, what my thinking was, was they're going to go ahead and prepay it. They knew we weren't ready for it. I knew we weren't ready for it. I didn't know when we were going to be. I thought it was going to be much quicker. But the idea being is if we have to put boots on the ground to install this once they see it and they want it, that's $5,000 because the wiring is relatively complicated to get it to go on doing it. So in my mind, and I maybe have been wrong, my thinking was, okay, we're gonna give these people a great deal. They know it's gonna take time. I'm gonna lose money on this deal for sure, but I don't really care. I need people to try out my new thing when I get it ready to go. That was the plan and remember, I thought I had the hardware working. I didn't realize the software was gonna be that hard. So anyway, with the new system here, what we're gonna do is everybody who has the old system, which has the belt drive, is gonna get a brand new BLE system. So they'll get a brand new W axis and they'll get a brand new direct drive, whatever axis they've got there. Now the new system, I hope it was worth the wait, folks, because there's nothing we can't do now. We can chamfer pipe, we can cut angle iron, we can do everything. It's just a matter of software. So anyway, 
that's, that's my plan. Now to change out these parts aren't that bad because we've already wired the machine. It's already been wired. So the average person should be able to change this part out here in about 30 minutes to an hour. They gotta be careful. We don't wanna break any wires. But the last thing we wanna do is have to put boots on the ground to do something that's relatively simple. So we will shoot a step-by-step -step video showing you exactly how to do it. And believe me, I love this new system. It's very rigid, it's self um, zero backlash. It pretty much adjusts the backlash out by itself. Um, very robust system, it, it really works good. Anyway, that is the gist of it. Now what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna work with the flagpole company tomorrow. Once I get that flagpole doing, I mean, it's working beautiful, wait till you see it. My goal is, is hopefully Thursday or Friday, I'm gonna shoot a video showing you the new software which is called GC Maker not very original, G code maker, GC maker. And you'll see it going to town doing pipe, you know? Now another pipe we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you here in a minute, is actually a giant piece of plastic pipe we're gonna be doing this week also. So anyway, look for the software and when you see it, we'll start adding features more and more and I'll talk about that when I show you the software. Anyway, I am gonna grab that camera and walk over here and show you something that we're getting ready to do. So let me get it here. All right, here's what we're getting ready to do, guys. We want the XR12 to, to, to be the do-it-all machine. You're doing railing. This company here, I'm not really sure what this is for, but in a couple days, I've already gone ahead and added a feature. I just call it a square normalized cutout, and we're going to cut that out with a spindle on the big long machine that I just showed you down there. Anyway, let me turn this thing around. There we go. Thanks for tuning in. Once again, I apologize, guys. It took a long time. Hardest thing I've ever done, but I'm on the right track now. I've got this thing covered. Wait for it. Give me a couple more days. Watch the video on the software, and then you're going to see videos coming out every single week, probably multiple videos, because every time I add a feature, for instance, um, marking, I want to mark a stringer, you know, stuff like that, you're going to see that feature explained how to use it. So hopefully, you're going to see these things fast and furious. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Hope you have a great night, day, whatever it is. Goodbye.